Hi, this is Lisa from America's Test Kitchen Gearheads, and I'm here to answer some of the great questions that you left on our video about capsule kitchens. So let's get started. A lot of people were concerned that our spatula recommendation was $65, and I have uh, that spatula is right here. It's the Wusthof uh, Gourmet Fish Spatula, which we like for every kind of spatula. Um, it's wonderful, it's got this lovely little curve, it's thin, it's maneuverable. But we have a Best Buy, which is really similar by MIU, and it doesn't quite have the same little upturned curve, but it has a little bit of one. And otherwise, is, is a really good choice um, that works just as well for a fraction of the price. So MIU Kitchen, stainless steel, fish spatula, it's a great all-purpose spatula. Another comment that tons of people had, and we could not agree more, is that we did not include a sheet pan. Um, I think a sheet pan would be the perfect addition. And you have to know that Hannah and I had huge, really enjoyable debates about what belonged in and out of the capsule kitchen. We were trying to keep it to like 12 pieces, um, and we were trying to pick the most essential things that you should do a lot of things with. I have to say, sheet pans definitely fit that definition. Um, we had to leave something out, and I think most people said, no, that was one you should have put in. I agree. We will be talking about sheet pans in future videos, but I do have here our favorite sheet pan. This is our favorite sheet pan. It's by Nordicware, and it's a really great half sheet pan size. We also really love this cooling rack by Checkered Chef goes right inside. It makes this pan much more versatile. You can use it as a broiling rack. You can put fried foods here after you fry them so they don't sog out. Cookies, you know, bake the cookies here, cool them on the rack. So it's a great combination and super versatile. We use it for everything in the test kitchen. A couple people said, why not a cookie sheet? I would use a sheet pan instead of a cookie sheet, to be honest, because it's way more versatile. The rim really helps. You can also bake jelly roll cakes and all kinds of things in there. This is the quarter size pan, the quarter sheet pan, also very handy. And if you have limited space, this is the same company, Nordicware. It's a great choice. And as you can see, it's half the size of the half sheet pan. So um, I would do that. But I will say that one reason we didn't have a lot of bakeware, some people were asking about that is that you can do a lot of baking right in your cast iron pan and in your Dutch oven. Um, in a capsule wardrobe and a capsule kitchen, each piece has to do double, triple, quadruple duty to make it really fit and to cover all the bases. And we bake pies and cakes. Uh, we roast in the cast iron skillet. You can bake cookies. We have a skillet cookie recipe that makes one giant cookie, or you can make individual ones. You can bake pa cakes, pies, uh, you can roast, you can fry, all those good things in one pan, which you can't really do with a cookie sheet. Um, it gives you a little more versatility. And obviously the Dutch oven, you can bake bread and use it in those ways. So it gives you versatility as well. So that's why those particular pieces made it into the capsule kitchen and we didn't have a lot of other bakeware. Couple questions about the scale versus measuring cups. We agree we love using a scale for baking. Um, most recipes, including ours, have volume measurements as well as weight measurements. And so, you know, a ton of recipes, especially in the U.S., use volumes rather than weights. And so you do need measuring cups as well. But if you can add in a scale, our favorite is by OXO. It's an 11-pound scale. It works really well and it converts from ounces to grams with just a push of the button right on the face, on the controls. And I use mine like five times a day at home. Um, it's never out of reach. So I agree, a scale is a great thing to have. If you can add that in, definitely do it, especially if you bake a lot. A couple people mentioned that instead of just a chef's knife, they'd add in a paring knife. And I think that's a great idea. Um, you know, every time you add something, you are expanding how much stuff you have. But, and if you keep your knife nice and sharp, you can do a lot of the same tasks with your chef knife. But we do have a favorite paring knife. It's by Victorinox, same as the chef knife. And this is the little um, three and a half inch paring knife. And this thing is fantastic, just like the full size chef knife. It has a nice grippy handle. It has a very, very sharp, narrow blade, a sharp point. You can do real precision work. You can do things while you're cutting it, cutting things in your hand or on the cutting board. And it's a great bargain. It's under $10 totally recommend it. So it doesn't take up a lot of space, isn't expensive. Sure, put it
put it in your capsule kitchen, you're not going to regret it. So finally, we had a question about cast iron. Someone said, my cast iron pan stays light to darkish brown. I'm not sure why it doesn't darken. Um, you know, cast iron and carbon steel pans are the same way. When you're seasoning them and uh, using them, they become more and more black, but they start out brown. They start out blotchy brown. Most cast iron pans that you see if you buy them and they're jet black, those are pre-seasoned in the factory um, where they have the ability to get just the right temperature in the oil and spray it on very evenly and bake it on so you get a real good head start on your seasoning. They used to sell unseasoned cast iron pans. I think you can still find them, but then they're silver, the sort of a dark silver gray. And as you start using them, they start out brown and they darken, they look blotchy. Um, it's just like a carbon steel pan. It starts out brown and blotchy, it will eventually darken and darken and become more and more solidly black. Don't worry about it. Over time, and it may take years, it will turn dark and eventually black. If you wanted to make it more even, more quickly, you could spread the very thinnest layer of oil over it and wipe off most of it till you think you've wiped it all off. You haven't. Put it in the oven upside down and bake it for an hour at like 500 degrees. Um, and then turn it off and let it cool in there. And it will darken more evenly if you really feel that's important. But honestly, it's doing its job. It will get darker over time. Just if you have patience, it's a lifetime pan. It's a mini lifetime pan. So it will get there. And that's it for this time, but we'll hope we'll catch you next time on Gearheads.